Okay, here we are back at the potion cave. Last time I showed that there was a problem with this thing working. I've devised a really complicated method to fix it. It's going to be a little bit hard to follow. I'll try to explain everything to the best of my ability, but I do have to rush through some of it. Um, and it isn't the simplest way I could do this, but it is a good way because it will show people some of the more complicated things that you can do with ZQuest and some of the more ridiculous ways that you'll be forced to get around limitations of the program. Now first of all, in this one, what you'll want to do is get rid of all traces of the potion store existing, which is the room type, shop type, string, guy, and side warp. You don't want to have any of that here. Instead, you're going to move upwards into this cave, which looks exactly like screen 80. So what you have to do is just copy screen 80 and put it up here. The only difference is that this one is going to have an upwards going staircase in the corner. So you put that, put the blue and the green in front of the stairs, and aside from setting the tile warp, that's all that needs to be done for this screen. When you go up the stairs, the tile warp, it'll take you to this overworld screen, which I also made with, uh, before I started recording to save time. Here you want to have a downwards going staircase, in roughly the same place as the upwards going one in this cave. This one is going to be referred to as the decoy cave. You'll see why in a bit. So put a staircase there and wait, I'll put this over here. Put those things. This is screen 59 so on this one we want to have the tile warp set to screen 59 overworld entrance exit and that's all dandy. Then also on this screen, you want to have one of these whistle marks, which I'll explain in a minute. There's one other screen that needs to be made, though. I'm going to be making that in the upper left corner, right next to this cave. This one is going to be completely walled off, except for two things. One, you want to have another staircase in the exact same place as the one on the overworld screen. And two, you want to have a downwards moving conveyor belt somewhere on the bottom of the screen. Why? I will explain in a minute. So, first of all, back to this one. What this whistle warp is, uh, the whistle mark is going to do is it's going to change the staircase into a pit. So, set this in flag 3, the flag 16. We're going to have to make a new combo. Make it right here. Get the same exact staircase. Leave it completely walkable and make it a pit. Now, staircase and pits both lead to whatever the tile warp is set to. However, there is one very important difference between them. The staircase will lead to the blue square. A pit will lead to the exact same place, like the same coordinates, on the other screen. So, what happens here is that when this is set as a staircase, it's going to lead to screen 01, so I better set that warp now. Tile warp to 01, and it's going to be an insta warp. It's, um, when it's a staircase, it leads to this, the conveyor belt, which will immediately push you off and activate a side warp. If it's a pit, it will drop you onto this other staircase and activate another tile warp. This is sort of an, inter like an intermediate screen. You're only going to be on this for a fraction of a second, and like from the game's perspective, it might as well not exist. Because what we're basically doing with this is having two warps stemming from the same exact thing. One is a tile warp that leads to a tile warp, one is a tile warp that leads to a side warp. And so those two are going to lead to different things. The side warp is going to lead back to this pond screen. We already have the square set for that. This is screen 25. 
set the side warp to screen 25, the cave, entrance exit, and that's all good. This is going to lead to screen 80, which is finally going to be the potion shop. So this is where you set up, not the merchant, but uh, the, gu the string, the guy, the room type, which is potion shop, the potion, I mean the shop type, which is one, and all that's good. So here's a flow chart of what's going on here, because I know it's a little hard to understand so far. What happens is, you go on this screen, raft upwards, it leads to the decoy cave. There's nothing in here except a staircase. You take the staircase, it takes you up here. If you go back down the staircase, it will take you to this screen, lead to the blue square because it's currently a stairs type warp and immediately side warp you back to this. If you go here and play the whistle what it does is it like wakes up the person in the cave or tells them to come out and it changes this into a pit so it takes you to this one the pit leads to another staircase which immediately takes you to screen 80 this is where you this is where the shop is you buy your boomerang leave off the bottom of the screen, and screen 80 is set to take you back to whatever screen led to screen 80 in the first place, which in this case would be this one, and it deposits you onto the blue square, which then immediately side warps you back to this. So, because you're only going to be on this one for a split second, it will give the impression that you're leaving from the actual cave immediately back to this if that makes any sense whatsoever. I certainly hope that it does. So, uh, I'm going to take a quick break here. Alright, there's one last thing that needs to be done here. And that is dealing with this screen. As it stands, this looks completely ridiculous. And if you were to see this while playing the game, it would look very out of place and confusing. And generally, you just don't want to have anything like this. However, there's a way to hide it. First, go in green data, set invisible link, and no subscreen. Invisible link, as the name implies, will make your character invisible. No subscreen gets rid of the bar at the top that shows your items and the map and all that sort of stuff, and it also eliminates the ability to pause. So, all you'll be seeing on screen is this. No subscreen, no link. But even that looks stupid. So, there's a way to get rid of that as well. Let's find an open spot. Make a completely black tile. It's important that it's black and not the sort of see-through black. It has to be actual black. Then, create a new combo for it. Make it walkable. That's all it needs to be. Then, find an empty space. I'm going to do it on screen 02. Make an entire screen of nothing but this black. Then go back to this one, and we want to have that set up as a layer. Layers are a lot easier than one might think. You have six different layers on a screen. Technically seven, if you count layer zero. Zero is the one that you're actually walking around on. Then the other six are set up so that one and two appear above layer zero, but below you. Three and four appear above you. 5 and 6 appear above everything, including flying enemies. And so, for this one, even though there's no flying enemies, we're going to go ahead and use 6. So, all this, all this does is sort of, you have to designate what screen to pull the layer from. It's map 0, screen 02. None of this stuff matters. I don't even know what it means. And then this box is to determine if you want it to be transparent or not. So... Wait a minute. Zero two. Why is that not working? Okay, I'm officially confused. Oh, I'm sorry. It's map one, map zero. There we go. Completely black screen. However, it functions exactly the way that it did before. 
So now I'm just going to actually test the screen and hopefully it will all go well. I never actually tested this before. It was only figured out in theory. Alright, let's test this bugger now. So I got the money. You go up into here. This leads up to the overworld. You go back into the stairs. It'll quickly go to the black screen and then lead back here. As you can see, you can't even tell that the black screen's there because we did a very good job of hiding it. So then you go back up here. Play the whistle hear the noise. There's no visible change, but the staircase does change into the pit. And you go into the pit, and it takes you to the potion cave, where you can buy the boomerang. You leave, takes you back to the hidden black screen, and dumps you off back here. It worked completely flawlessly. Now that is what ZQuest can do if you put your mind to it. So I'm going to save. Next time will hopefully be a lot less complicated.